Hey folks, today I'm at Hull Services in Calgary and I'm going to be talking with Vaden. Um, we've done a profile of this greenhouse in the past and uh, in fact, today we did a profile of the entire garden. Vaden and the folks working in this space have just crushed it this year. This place is just exploding with, with life and growth and, and the kids are going to be coming back soon and so they're going to be benefiting from this, this garden. But I specifically came because Vaden uh, called me up not that long ago and told me uh, the story of this greenhouse over the last winter. So this last winter, we had an incredibly cold season. Uh, we were getting to minus 40 on a regular basis. I think we had a one, one and a half week, minus 40 week. And the annualized geosolar system or subterranean heating cooling system or climate battery, whatever you call it, basically kept this greenhouse above minus 10, which is amazing. And uh, we were talking a little bit today about some of the modifications we can make to improve that performance even more. And so Vaden's gonna take us into the greenhouse. Um, there is so much food growing in there right now. And he's gonna talk a little bit about the annualized geosolar system. The other thing that I'm gonna share with you today is an idea that Vaden came up with, uh, with one of the folks here at Hull Services, which I'm embarrassed to think that I didn't even come up with myself. Um, not because Vaden's not smart, he's actually super intelligent, but uh, it's just such a brilliant idea. And I don't know if you can see it from the picture right here, but they put a bed in front of the greenhouse and they filled it up with pollinator plants, uh, specifically borage. And it is just lit up with bees. And what's really cool about that is one of the challenges that we've had in our greenhouse forever um, in Calgary here, which is on a concrete pad, it's so a little bit harder to, to do what they've done here, um, is that we're always struggling to get pollinators into our greenhouse, which is one of the reasons that we've actually gone to hybrid cucumbers that don't require pollination so that we can still get a yield. But what they've done here is they've actually attracted the bees into the system um, almost by bumbling them in uh, by putting the flowers right in front of the greenhouse. So that, And in fact, you could think about the vents that are in front of that bed over there. Um, there's absolutely going to be some suction going through those vents as the greenhouse heats up so that wind or that air is going to pull those pollinators in. And even though there's a few square meters of space that's not being grown to something quote unquote productive. Every gardener knows that if you're growing plants that require pollination and you don't have it, you're not gonna get any production. And so any loss in growing space that he has ended up with there because of the borage, he's gained in production inside. And we'll see that when we go inside the greenhouse. All right, let's go take a look. at the outlet for the AGS system. That's how I did it. Um, there's a lot of efficiencies that I could do, which I, which I will do. Like there's an incredible amount of air that comes out of there and it runs pretty much constantly. Like today it turned on at you know, 21 degrees in the greenhouse, which was around 10 o'clock. So it's blowing all day. I have to shut off now because you got to hear my dulcet tones, but it's blasting and it's loud. I could put fan controls on there to slow the speed. I can build housings for them. I made them out of old uh, symbols that we had from an old drum kit here, just because I like doing weird stuff like that. But you could make a, a kind of a more formalized containment for that, for that air and blow it, deploy it into the greenhouse in, in different areas to use that instead of putting oscillating fans. Or There's lots of fun stuff that you can do and I think that would boost efficiency and I will do it as soon as I have a bunch of extra time. In the front of the greenhouse this year, um, one of my co uh, colleagues here encouraged me to finish off the front of the greenhouse. So we uh, built a little bed and our big push, um, even with just uh, Expanding the greenhouse and the, the garden, our big push has always been for to, to, to gain our uh, health of our ecosystem. So pollinators are keystone, I suspect. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm really pushing to, to integrate a lot of pollination. And in front of the greenhouse can be an excellent place to draw a lot of attention. We have these windows that are on um, gas shocks that kind of open and close with the temperature. So having like a solid 
pollination bed in front of your greenhouse drives all those insects into the greenhouse just by accident. And I think, you know, if you have a couple pollinators in your garden, um, it's just not going to cut it. Like you need to have, you know, hundreds and thousands of pollinators cruising your garden all the time. So building ecosystem health is just going to encourage all that. And that's where, you know, I've seen other people who are, you know, producing producing more than like your average homeowner and they're using permaculture design principles to, to drive some of their uh, fertility by integrating rows of, of pollinating plants and, and beneficial uh, other beneficial plants and beneficial insects into the garden. That makes perfect sense. And for my context, it's perfect because I got lots of time and space to play so I can manage, you know, giving up a corner of my garden for production. I don't really care how much I produce at this point. I'm just trying to uh, build ecosystem health. And then it's amazing. This was a, a pollinator void when we moved in. And now it's just, there's native bees, there's honey bees, there's mason bees. I've, I've seen all the, uh, all the species that we have uh, here in Alberta. I've seen them today, probably. You're probably, for the lack of you know, cutting into your square footage, you're definitely benefiting yourself on the other end for sure. You know, one or two pollinator plants is just not going to cut it. Like, I think everyone here on this garden hates borage because it's prolific in the way it spreads through seeds. It doesn't germinate through the rhizome, but which makes it kind of easy to control, but it seeds prolifically and spreads like crazy. But it's easy to pull. And if you give it, if you contain it in a space, it produces this, which, you know, per square foot of bee activity is like, I don't know anything, but that's a lot of bees. Okay, hopefully you found that useful. Um, we're gonna be putting an entire case study that's up to date of this greenhouse into our passive solar greenhouse case study uh, library on our website. I'll put a link to that in the show notes below. In that library, we've got tons of different case studies of passive solar greenhouses right across Alberta, British Columbia, and soon to be Saskatchewan. Uh, take a look at the link, and uh, if you have any questions about greenhouses or anything going on in Hull Services, I'll make sure I leave a link to uh, Vaden's Instagram, uh, account down below um, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.